cutting off my arm. What's up, freaks? Stop trying to cut off my arm. I didn't get all pumped up for nothing. <laughs> What's up, freaks? This is a Russian and the Freak episode number eight. Streaming live on the Instagrams, the Facebooks, and all that other crap. There's all kinds of screens all over the place here. This week, we are talking about accountability. Who's keeping you accountable? Who's making you keep your get your shit together and keep your shit together? On The Russian and the Freak, this is a show about how to maintain your equilibrium and function in a dysfunctional world as a freak family in business and life so you can transform your chaotic complexity into your own personal normalcy or normal or something like that. Normal. <laughs> yeah, so we figured this is going to be a great topic, especially that nowadays a lot of people need, right? So who really keeps you accountable? You should have, we think that you should have someone that will keep you accountable. Like think about your environment, your family, your friends, maybe think about work, right? Who are you keeping yourself accountable and who keeps you accountable? So uh, why are we talking about the subject of accountability? Because when someone, someone keeps you accountable, right, you, you, perform better, you have better opportunities, better uh, better possibilities, right, in life. And I believe that we absolutely perform better with someone else, of someone else's eye on us, right? I think about it, <laughs> Steve is laughing, uh, because that's what we do with our family and to have a guide or a mentor by you. So write it down, guys. I see you popping here on the screen like, what do you think about like just being accountable to someone in your uh, closest Save environment? Me. Like, Save are me. you okay? The freak sun is coming. So we, 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 I believe that we all want more in our life. Like when I look at my life, I can say this from perspective of me. Like we all want more, but sometimes it's just hard. As much as you think, like, okay, I'm such a badass, I can do this. Having someone there that will tell you, okay, you have to be, you have to have a deadline. You have to be accountable for me. You have to. You need to have someone to hold you accountable when you're talking too much and have them let you know it's time to keep the ball rolling and move on. So, you know, before I started, we just finished working out, did a, a weight lift or no, body weight Friday, freedom Friday, and then a, a mile sprint and then over 20 minutes in the sauna. So I had my post-workout drink getting set up for this show. So I put it right here. You can't see off camera, but there's some like, whatever decorations or some shit you want to call it in the studio here for different parts of a recording studio something that's holding them up happens to be an old bottle of liquor that's holding one of like a stand behind one of the the things so i was going to reach for my post-workout drink <laughs> which is right here and it just looked like i was going to reach for this alcohol and i don't even drink but i started thinking maybe to get through episode number eight of the of russian and the freak to deal with this that's all going on here i may just have to go get back into it this is actually, a, we saved this because this is actually a gift. It's almost already halfway gone. When we first opened up the first location of the gym, uh, one of the clients gave that as a gift. So I wasn't reaching for the alcohol. I was reaching for the post-workout drink, but I may end up going back to my old ways. And you don't want to see that happen. You think it's fucking weird now. Wait till you see a little, if a little bit of alcohol got up in the system, what would happen? We'd be up on top of this countertop and doing all kinds of weird shit. Anyway, we got to keep rolling. We're talking about accountability. What is accountability? Accountability is not just responsibility why is it so crammed here like you're taking you you, you I'm like, what are you saying here. that i'm just such a big bird or something a, a what <laughs> big birda yeah but i'm taking so responsibility those. and accountability are two different things think of responsibility as what's expected of you but then accountability being answering for what's expected of you so there are there are two different things you need to have responsibility but also accountability accountability is who's going to answer for it so what else is accountability? It's also liability. It's also being on the hook, being the one who has to answer for shit that does or does not happen on your team, on your watch, in your family, anywhere in your area. That's what accountability is really like. And there's several different stages of accountability. When you start breaking it down, you start thinking about it. You've got to think about having someone else to hold you accountable is the first, really the first stage is having someone else to hold you accountable. But then after that, you need to use that, what you're learning, those tools, to then hold your fucking self accountable, to not always have to have someone else holding you accountable. Then once you have someone hold you accountable, you start holding yourself accountable, then you could start holding other people accountable. 
Once you do that, you want to then, the best way to learn something is to teach it. You want to teach them how to hold themselves accountable and then teach them how to hold others accountable. Look at that. It's like a flow. It's a circular flow. So again, have someone that's holding you accountable, hold yourself accountable, hold others accountable, then teach them how to hold themselves accountable. So they don't always have to rely on you the same way that you had someone hold you accountable and you figured out yourself and then teach them how to hold others accountable. Imagine how much impact and how much you could how much difference you can make it's like a force multiplier if you could get that cycle going how many people you could reach out to if you were doing that if you were learning to hold yourself accountable and once you learn to hold yourself accountable for your actions now it's not just when someone says something gets done great and someone says who did that and, and your, your hands way up in the air and then something gets fucked up and they say who did that and your hand is like this like a little bitch like you put your hand the same fucking way up in the air like a man no matter what don't put your hand up because you think my I have ar- ar- hairy armpits. You guys, <laughs> the, the, these, the Germans. Something is coming. These Germans, they got fucking, it looks like she got buckwheat and a headlock in there. It's not Germans, <laughs> but who, they used to do it. Who knows who buckwheat is? <laughs> Anyone know who buckwheat is? She looks like she got buckwheat and a headlock. Like, we need to throw some funny stuff here in this show as much as serious It's not even stuff. funny. It's scary. It's scary? All right, let's keep rolling. So you need to hold, hold, once you learn to hold yourself accountable for your actions, good and bad, holding your hand just as fucking high for the good stuff as you do for the bad stuff, then you can start holding other people accountable for their actions. And once you start holding them accountable, they can learn to hold themselves accountable. And then the cycle just continues forward as they're teaching it, teaching it, and it just rolls downhill and it just spreads out forever. And you'll see the, the wide network of what you're able to, how you're able to spread out just the positivity and, and the accountability. Yes, and we're just going to give you some examples even of uh, our environment. But before I need a we're going to... I need a drink. Yeah. I it, really, alcohol. I'm telling you guys, when he reached out, I was for a second like, my God, what is he doing? Uh, yes. But like, think about you. Like, What is stopping you from going to the next level? in your mind, body, and business. Like, think about the the five stages that, like, Steve mentioned about, right? And, like, it, with our, like, I will give you an example of, um, of the, uh, of our, of our environment and maybe what you can look outside in your environment. So, think about, like, people, people who are next to you, who, who, who you meet daily, uh, in like daily meetings, right? Maybe at work, uh, maybe in your family, somebody that has like a great attitude and pos- positivity, people uh, who will tend to look even in the, tent. the w- tent, not tent, tent like tent, tent, going tent. <laughs> tent. He said to me that we, I'm going camping going with camping the positive with your people mindset. With positivity, a bunch of yes, hippies. But, uh, these people tend to look into the worst situation uh, as as not as bad as you think it is. So they have really best outlook in life. So think about these people that are there in your life. And I'm sure that they are. You just need to kind of look. Because we might think that the situation, there is no way out, out of it. But there is always some way out. And these people might direct you, might lead you. And that's really what the accountability person is, right? Think about their discipline. Like, look around. Who is really I'm disciplined? Have a seat. I'm going to have a seat because we might be here a while. Yeah, yeah. This is going to be good. So Holy write shit. it down. Like, who is disciplined? Who do you have in your environment that is disciplined? In their mind, in their body, in their business. I mean, if somebody is disciplined in their body, you will see that they look great. They eat better, right? They have better outlook in life. Like, someone that it sucks successful and leads by example so we say you know walk the walk right don't just say it just do what you actually say it there all that where there Where? it's gonna be a while this is a a 20 minute show (laughs) he's out of the picture on my camera someone who is consistent and persistent someone who shows really excellence in everyday life and someone so who consistently is moving forward and you can see their growth. So think about it and ask yourself the question, like, would you connect with them? Would you be able to take and would you be willing to take some examples of their life? All right, let's keep rolling We here. see you guys' comments right now. Yes, yes. I want to give you an example before we continue on because we need a break from that because I don't know how you could possibly get many words out without taking a breath without turning fucking purple 
and pass I it out. Look. So think, I want to think of accountability like this. In the old, great, old ancient Rome, you know those big pillars, all those big stone, huge pillars you see like in Greece and Rome and whatever else. The architects that built those, they probably didn't touch their hands on one single piece of stone. The ones that created it and designed it. But you know, when, when it was done and it was built and they were going to go show it to the emperors that the, the building was done, they would stand under all the stones and all the other stuff and have all the people in the village shake the stones to show that it's sturdy, it's strong, and it's ready. And that person never even touched a single stone. So that shows you what accountability is. He's holding him. That's the ultimate accountability. He'll turn into a fucking a Roman pancake if, if those, that building does come down. So he probably had hundreds and thousands of different people working on that structure and he was willing to stand under it. So that's a question I want you to ask yourself. Are you willing to stand behind the shit that you, you talk about, the shit that you do, the shit that you put out there, even if you didn't even t- actually touch your hands on it? Maybe your team touched your hands on it, your family or whatever. Are you willing to stand under the stones? That's extreme accountability. That's real accountability. That's the level I want you to be thinking when it comes to accountability. Yeah, and uh, we just want to give you like a couple of examples even on, of our family, how we do it. I mean, we, we try to keep each other accountable, right? We have two kids. It's Tyson and Nimej. You probably seen them in the first show that they just did with Steve. If you haven't, just maybe you can look back in this week and, and check them out. They're really funny. And how how we do it, really, I will, I will give you an example. It's it's pretty cool. Like, they have their schedule. And if you are a parent and if you have kids, I hope that you keep some kind of a schedule for your kids and you keep them accountable for what's supposed to be done. So we do this not only to make them work because it's uh, we teach them the values, right? And we want them to know that there are responsibilities in life that they need to start doing now. So uh, for instance, if they have a, a, a something on a schedule that they have to clean the garage and Tyson and Ivanka go there and they, and they clean the garage and Tyson keeps her accountable, she keeps him him accountable, he keeps her more accountable than she she is, but she will, and she will be like, okay, here, fix it here, or do this, and then I make sure that they will do this, and they report to me, right, but then the other day, it was pretty cool, it just happened already twice, when Tyson finished his workout, and he is like, Ivanka, uh, can you make me eggs because mama is be- busy? And she said, sure, I will do that. But it would never happen if me in the first place would not teach her how to do it, right? What are the steps in doing it? Who, make and then Who makes eggs? She did it twice already for him. I mean, I'm not eating them eggs. Yeah, and why would you not? They're very good. She exactly knows how to do it. and She makes she- eggs. A little kid. No yes, case. twice. Poor Tyson. And it was amazing that she did that because I would say it would never happen if I didn't teach her. I didn't show her the steps. I didn't make her accountable and, and tell her, well, listen, if I am not around, maybe you can help someone, right? And that's what exactly happened. It just happened without me even pushing her to do it. It just happened on its own. Midge, I want some eggs. Egg whites. Did you hear her? Okay, she really likes to do this. It's really cute. So what else? Like we pretty much think about the positive mindset. We 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 try to be grateful every day, right? We try to keep each other accountable as far as what our family is trying to accomplish, right? So what we do, we, we read books, we attend seminars sometimes, but we just hold each other accountable. Like the other day, it was something on the schedule and they didn't really feel like doing. And I'm like, guys, this is on the schedule. We purposely did that schedule. So let's do it. I think it was a walk. And then the other day you said, okay, we all supposed to be reading. And those are the things that you can do in your family. But you need to be willing to sit together and create something like this that will work for all of you, right? And it will work maybe at the same time as you're doing it. So what else are we doing? We're doing like the body, uh, really mind and body, right? So body. Let me tell you this. If you work together or have business with anyone in your family, don't think because you're in a family that you can't hold them accountable for business because I will hold your ass accountable for business. I'll tell you when you're half-assing shit because you need someone to tell you that shit. And if someone's not going to tell you when you're half-assing stuff, like shit, there's, there's no reason that someone should get away with things in a business just because they're a family member that someone else wouldn't get away with. Think about how, how, that, how stupid that sounds. If you wouldn't put up with it with a, 
another employee that wasn't a family member, why would you put it up with someone else, no matter who it is, no matter what your relation is to them, there's no putting up with half-assing, none. Yes, yes. So what else are we doing? Like eating supplementation really is, is the same thing. I, I would say recovery, working out. Uh, it's it's really with as far as the body, we're pretty much on the same page. But as Steve said, uh, sometimes in families, I think it's just might feel awkward that you don't want to say something, but you definitely should. You should keep your family members accountable. And, and in business, we also add the schedule on our schedule that are business meeting our meeting because obviously we work together we 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 have some businesses together so it really works for us and if you have if you run a business and you are a couple that run a business having those meetings is crucial and then when you're supposed to have a deadline or submit something or finish a work you should be hold you should be responsible and then you should hold yourself accountable mm -hmm. for it mm-hmm what is That's it? That's for sure. I'm disagreeing. <laughs> I'm disagreeing with you. I'm gonna, to, I'm gonna have to replay that part a couple times a fucking week. I think out loud on a fucking loudspeaker. Yes. So, guys, what is this leading us to? Really hiring a coach. If you don't have that person, that you think it's the example that you can take really great points from that you don't have that leader that mentor that guide you need to look outside you need to hire someone that is that you think that is the person to go to you can hire me i'll make you keep your shit together you want to hire me give me a credit card okay let's do this the, in, when we when we do the project let me tell you something we do on the project which if you don't know is a men's personal development program, actually coming up this Tuesday. So we're starting to get into project mode around here. It's getting real fucking projecty around here. We like to project that shit. We project everything. So the project is coming up this Tuesday. A huge thing we do in the project that men, and probably no one in general, but specifically we, I'm talking about men. They don't, account, what is accountability? Accountability is really giving and receiving feedback because that's holding someone accountable for their actions or what they could do better or whatever. So feedback and accountability are really the same thing. And in the project, what we have men do is literally rank each other, rate each other. They literally have to give a, from a 1 to 20 or whatever, rank every other man in the group. And then go face to face, eye to eye, like in human contact, not hiding behind a fucking little keyboard. Like, hey, man, you're a jerk. I'll kick your ass. Or whatever these fucking losers put on, on the internets. Like literally face to face. And they have to let the other, let the other guy know, why did, I, why did I pick you? Why did I say you think you're last on the team? What do I think you need to be doing better? And just saying, oh, you're last because you really need to step it up. Or you're first because you've been putting out. That shit ain't fucking good enough. You need to give actual steps, actual examples and reasons of why you're giving the specific feedback. Someone like specific feedback, specific examples, and not just, oh, you fucking suck. Because where does that get someone? It's, oh, you fucking suck. Here's one or two things you might want to try. Here's what works for me. Maybe it'll work for you. Or let's get together later on the side and figure out how we could, we could help this out. Because listen, I need help with this. So maybe I'll help you out with that. And you help me with this later on. Sign like a plan. Like have a plan when you're giving feedback. There's nothing worse than the, the, the fucking douchebags that just want to go and give feedback just to talk shit to people. Just nonstop. Just they're, they're just the masters of everything. Can tell everyone what's fucking wrong with everyone. They've got no solutions for anything. Just about what all the fucking problems are. Nothing worse than that. That's just an ass. That's what, that's what's called an asshole. But people avoid feedback. They avoid giving feedback. They avoid receiving feedback. They don't ask for feedback. They don't ask anyone if they can give them feedback because it's it's too uncomfortable and, and too fucking scary. Like, grow the fuck up. Put on your big boy pants. Nut up. Shut up. And, and make it happen. Give feedback. Receive feedback. In one of the business presentations I have when, when I go around to, to companies and coach their teams on leadership, communication, teamwork, and problem solving... There's this one presentation that I show. It has all these building blocks showing uh, how, how to build a team and what, how, to, how to accomplish the mission, basically. It kind of has a, a little military flair to it. But one, in the middle section, there's two sections. One is receiving feedback and one is transmitting feedback. And it has an arrow coming this way and an arrow I need to go in that way. So it's a loop, an arrow. And it actually looks like a house in a structure. And one of the, one of the people in the audience, so I'm stealing this from actually one of the people I coached, came up with that they see feedback the way that it was in that picture as like the ventilation system throughout the house. Like without the feedback, shit just gets stagnant. 
and people get passive aggressive and they suffer in silence and they act like little fucking whiny bitches because they hold it in and keep it in and don't let someone know what they're thinking or what they're feeling because they don't have the fucking balls and they don't have the courage to actually speak up about things or let someone know what's going on or let someone know how they could get better or ask people, how are you, how am I doing? What do I need to do better? And sometimes you might get stupid fucking answers, but you're still going to take every bit of it and try and do something with it. Try and show that you're taking it in and you're actually doing something with the feedback that you're getting. So don't be a little bitch. Ask for feedback. Give feedback with only the intention of making an improvement, improving the person. The only time you ever should give someone feedback is to improve the person, either A, improve the person, B, move the mission forward, or C, just improve your relationship with that person. That's it. Like, not to, because you want to show how fucking good you are or make them see how, how much they suck. That is not the reason for feedback. If that's the case, just shut the fuck up, sit down, and, and leave it up to the big boys. Yes. So, if you guys can put it in the comments exactly if you have somebody that holds you accountable or maybe like a situation that happened. I see here some of you just uh, posted. Oh, somebody was posting that they did three-hour workout. Okay, hold on one second. I see people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fuck this all uh, okay. We have a creed in the project. One of the lines of the creed of the project is, first of all, I'm a man of my word. I make a promise and I keep it. That's one of it. That's being held yourself accountable. But then there's another line, even more directly related to accountability. And it's, I'm responsible for everything in my life. And that gives me the power and control to change my circumstances. Like no one else can control your circumstances you are fucking in control of right now so stop bitching and crying and and thinking about yesterday and my mommy and daddy didn't fucking love me and i didn't get any attention as a kid boo fucking who poor little you or start stressing with all this anxiety about what's coming up tomorrow or next week or going back to stressing about what you fucked up yesterday or last week or what's coming up a presentation you have or what's next in your fucking career worry about right fucking now Think about it right now. Worry about it now. Stop whining and bitching about all that other stuff. Be responsible for everything in your life and start with this fucking day. This is fucking Friday. With this Friday, with this moment right fucking now. Yes, and I, I see a question here. What happens if I, if that somebody posted, if I work with a bunch of fat, lazy people and the owner does not uh, hold anybody accountable? Well, the owner, first of all, has to do some self-development and grow and it seems like maybe you are not the right place in the right not in the right company. Maybe if you are a high achiever and you need something more, so you need to ask yourself deep questions and maybe just talk to the owner and see because sometimes people are stuck. They don't know what to do. Maybe they need a good training and 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 really invest in themselves because if you say the whole situation that is going on over there, that seems like that has to be a huge change. There is not a small change. It has to happen immediately, pretty much. What was yes. that question? Who was that, that was, question? That was what happens. Hold on here. What happens right here? Oh, Mr. Niz Nism. I like yeah. that question anyway. Yeah, just yeah. It's not great. afraid to just come straight forward and say you're about around a bunch of fat, lazy people. Well, welcome to America. That's what we're surrounded by, unfortunately. But here's two things you could do. Think about it like this. The first thing is, obviously, do your due diligence. Be the leader. Set the example. Start trying to get some of those people to come along for the ride with you. You're taking care of yourself. You're leveling up. Try to take those people along for the ride with you. Now, probably maybe 10% will be taking up on that offer, whether to go for a walk with you, go for a hike with you, go for a workout with you. Maybe recommend a book to them. Even go buy them a book to start thinking a little differently, to take better care of themselves, to get their shit together. Talk about the book. Things like that. Try to take them along for the ride with you. Be the leader. Be the example. Be the role model. That's the first thing. Now, if that type of influence and persuasion doesn't work, the second thing to do is have a complete fucking mindset shift of thinking, all right, these people are fat and fucking lazy. I'm around them. I'm working. I'm a fucking high performer. Let's say you're operating at an eight and they're operating at a, a three. The second, the better you do, the shittier they are, the higher you're going to look. You're going to look like a fucking 10. Think about if you're around a bunch of, like, you, you ever notice that some, some girls that are like a six or a seven out of 10, they'll hang around a bunch of twos or threes because it makes them look like an eight or a nine. They make them look like a fucking beauty queen. That's why they hang around with a bunch of ugly chicks. That's the way it is. So you're the same thing. You should be thinking, thank you for being the fat, lazy, 
ugly chick in the office because I'm going to not look like such a, even more of a high performer, more of a badass that I am. I'm going to stand out even more. I'm going to fucking own this mountain. So thank you for sucking because you're now making me look even better than I am. So look at it from both of those ways. First try to take them along for a ride and then just use their fucking shittiness to even elevate you even higher and make you look even better. Think about it. That's how you fucking get, will, will stand out. And you definitely are because obviously something bothers you with this situation. So uh, definitely investing in yourself and uh, pushing, as Steve said, and you you will do excellent. If you have any other questions, post it Why are we making here. faces when I was talking about the six or the sevens that are hanging out with all the twos and threes? Is that, is that your game plan? Is that when, I, that when we met, you were hanging around a bunch of ugly bitches? <laughs> Uh-huh. This is very Catching interesting. On. This Catching is on. very, very Catching interesting. On. You can never. Steve will always come out with crazy. Body Works crazy Publishing. Stuff. What's up? Just met in New Jersey. The help with the event down there. He did a three hour workout Sunday, three hour Monday, three hour Tuesday, one hour Wednesday, two hour Thursday, two hours today, preparing for John and mine's first 24 hour challenge. That's freaking awesome. What's the 24 hour challenge going to be? Because I was telling them about the challenge, and that is BJ from New Jersey that helps us out with this Yeah, name. but Mr. Nizim, like, I, I would like to tell you also that because the, the environment that you are with is so negative overall, you know, if you see people lazy and, and just and, and not courageous enough, just, just this whole environment can put put you down so you need to build that armor and you need to invest in yourself definitely by reading good books if you need something just let us know we can send you some information just send us direct message we have great books recommendations and really coaching that will push you to the next level and if you have to let me tell you this if you have to have the nuts have the balls to fucking fire your boss fire your fire the owner if you have to, if if you have that, if you're capable of doing that and go put yourself in a better situation, a better environment, that's going to be more conducive to your growth. If you're in an environment that's not helping you grow, if you're the smartest person in the room, the fastest, the strongest, the toughest person in the room, you're going to never, you're going to go nowhere. You're going to be stuck and all those people are going to catch up to or even surpass yeah, you. Yeah, because you need a challenge in your life. If you are this kind of person, think about it. Like if you always the best in a whole room. How can you really grow? You need someone to be a little bit better than you. So you feel that push. You'll feel that challenge, right? So we love this when you guys participate and send those things. So Body Works Publishing, what is the first 24-hour challenge that you guys are doing? Put it there in the comments. What's the 24-hour challenge? Maybe you put it there. I'm trying to scroll. Well, we were, we were saying we're going to do the hike. No, the 24-hour challenge that they are doing. Not that we are doing. Yeah. That she is doing. She's doing her setting up for their 21st 24 hour challenge. Oh, so what? I told her about our 24 hour challenges. Here, you need some feedback and you need some accountability for not paying attention. Okay, okay. There, she, her and her fiance are doing a 24 hour challenge. I met them this weekend in New Jersey at the event and I was telling them about the challenges that we do and now they're doing their own 24 hour challenge. But I wonder what the first 24 hour challenge is. Greetings from Mexico, Edu Gonzalez. What's up? Awesome. Freak. All right, so let's keep on rolling. So I just was talking about the project and what the how, how accountability works in the project. So let's keep rolling and talk about, we were talking about if you, if you don't, if you are in a bad environment, get yourself out of the environment. If you don't have a coach, don't have anyone to hold you accountable, accountable get, get a coach. Hire a coach, get a coach, get an accountability partner, get a friend, a coworker, someone even online that you can hook up with and get accountable if you can't afford a coach or whatever. Yeah, there is uh, there is really, uh, you can set it up with a friend of yours, somebody that um, just literally wants someone to report every week. And you guys have a series of questions that you will answer to each other and hold each other accountable and always have a plan and a goal. Okay, what's the next week is for you and for me, what you should be doing? And then, the person tells exactly what they need to do. You say it. And then when you meet a week later, you need to talk about this. Have they done it? Why they have not accomplished it? What stopped them? What are the obstacles and things that nature? But in depth, when you do, when you do work with a coach, those are in-depth questions that will really lead you to an answer. It's, it's really interesting how this whole thing works, that it's not about the coach to figure it out like completely for you, okay, why you haven't done something. You're going to answer yourself 
by answering series of questions, you will deep, dig deep, deep and like really peel the onion and find out why you have not done something that you're supposed to. Because listen, everyone needs a coach. Everyone needs someone to hold them accountable. Everyone needs either a partner, a mentor, a guide or something. And for all areas of your life, for all the goals you have and whatever else, even great athletes and actors and businessmen and teams and owners of teams and coaches, even coaches have fucking coaches. Everyone needs a coach. We all see, need someone to keep us sharp and to keep you on your A game, to keep you focused, to hold you accountability, to call you out on your bullshit and to tell you shit that no one else is going to tell you, to not just tell you yes, if you're just a, someone that's a, the boss or the, the manager, the owner, and you're around a bunch of fucking yes men that are just telling you yes all the time, you specifically, you're the ones that think you don't need it the most. You're actually the ones that do need it the most because you're surrounded by a bunch of people that are just bowing to you and, and, and living in fear of you and just a bunch of fucking yes men. So you need more than anything, that's the type of person that needs someone to hold you to the fire, hold you to your fucking word, keep you accountable, call you out on your bullshit, tell you the shit that no one else is going to tell you, ask you the tough questions that no one else is going to ask you. That's what you need, the kind of people you need to be around. That's what real, what real accountability is and, and who actually really needs it the most. Because think about it, it's really like where those tough, tough questions really happen. It's like... It, they happen so rarely. People have such a, a common, most common questions and they really don't dig deep. Like think about today, yesterday, did anyone, anyone ha ask you like really hard questions about your life? And that's, that's what really the coaching is all about. Because if you want, if you don't like the situation that you are in right now, you want a change. There is always something that prepares you. It's the need for a change. And if you have that need, then you're ready. Because the program of coaching is not for everyone. Somebody that does not want to, uh, uh, but probably one of the people that work with this person that said it, uh, that works in such a bad environment, if that would be another person, maybe one of the lazy people that been working there, they would look at this show and they would be like, I don't need that. And Mr. Neesom, I hope you're not friends with too many people here on the Instagrams. And they're gonna see that you see your comments on here talking about that you you work with a bunch of fat lazy people. I, uh, or maybe they do need maybe those motherfuckers do need to see that. I love actually. I hope that you have those friends and these people actually seeing it because deep down, you know what happens to the lazy and overweight and the people they they deep down they don't like what it what it is. But they 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 make so many excuses to be in where they are. And, and let's look around us. Like, we got to step up our games, guys. And because this, the time is now. This is the whole thing right now that you need to change something. Not tomorrow, not the next day, not sending messages. Uh, I don't have time or maybe next time. Like, really have the guts to really just, face it just and just do it. <laughs> I like it. Fuck them. You fit our world. <laughs> yes, freak. All right, so let's wrap this up with... Just giving you a couple of different challenges. First, asking you, when's the last time you actually asked someone to give you feedback? That's holding you accountable. When's the last time you went and asked someone if you can give them feedback? Because again, feedback and accountability is the same thing. It's interchangeable. Then ask yourself, when's the last time that you didn't raise your hand as high as you should have and take responsibility and accountability for some shit that happened and you put the blame, paid the little bitch ass blame game. So I want you to, to in this next week or fucking today or this weekend, I want you to find three people, three different people, some from personal, professional life, your family, coworkers, whatever, and ask them to give you some feedback, just overall feedback on yourself, how you are, how you operate, what you could do better and what you can improve in without getting your little panties in a bunch and getting all fucking butthurt about it and uptight about it and not taking it personal, just shutting the fuck up and letting and listening to it without having a single word to say back or defensive fucking answer about what they have to tell you. Just let it, take it in and, and even write it down and try to do something about every single one of them. Even the ones that seem so fucking irrational, you can still find some little piece out of it that can make you even better. Then I want you to go and find three people in your, in your world that need some account, need to be held accountable and need some feedback for something. And I want you to approach those people within this next week or even this fucking weekend or even fucking today or right now. Like go and ask them, hey, is it right if I give you some feedback? Perfect. Look at that. Look how easy that is. And if they say no, they're just probably fucking a, a douche. So fuck them. Like Mr. Nism said, fuck them. Yeah. Fuck them. So that's the challenge that we're going to leave for you today here on episode number eight of The Russian and the Freak. 
that's about all I could take. I'm gonna go and hammer some of this stuff down to to get to get get over no, it. What he just won't. happened here? <laughs> Actually, don't drink it. I'll never drink again the rest of my life. Anyway, if you need some help in the accountability in the coaching department, send a private message or put a comment down below or reach out, send an email, smoke signal, whatever the fuck you need to do. We could set up a, a call where we could just talk about it, see where you are in life, see where you're looking to go, seeing what you need to do to get from where you are to where you want to be because that's what it's all about. We do operate to dominate OTD, peak performance accountability coaching in your mind, your body, and your business. But that's not the important part. The important part is where you are and where you need to get to and how you're going to get there. And having someone to push you and pressure you and not let you feed the bullshit into your own head or feed the bullshit from the world that's stopping you from getting there. To break through those fucking barriers so you can get from where you are to where you fucking want to be, need to be, and deserve to be. So send a private message. Let's talk about it. Yes, because a lot of you guys are feeling stuck and we get those messages. I feel stuck. I don't know what to do. And and it's not hard to really unstuck yourself. It's not hard. Like, unsuck, stop. unsuck yourself? No. How do you unsuck yourself? It's not unsuck. You, you need someone to hold you accountable. You need to get rid of distractions. You need to have a vision. You need to be held accountable and 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 first of all take care of yourself and really make the decision that you want this guys not tomorrow not later now today all right so. it's friday night we are all done here with episode number eight of the russian and the freak we are going to get fucking we're going to go drink we're going to go get fucking hammered off a protein shake and bang energy drinks for the rest of the night for a wild fucking night at the bar <laughs> we'll talk to you later you are fucking awesome no excuses. No excuses.